Hello everyone, Stanley here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you guys how to build an absolutely insane, ludicrous obsidian farm that can get you nearly 200,000 obsidian per hour. This farm is incredibly easy to build, very user friendly, you won't have to worry about it breaking ever or having loose withers or any nonsense like that. It's really just a simple, overpowered use of game mechanics that can get you nearly 200,000 obsidian an hour. Seriously, a crazy farm. Before we get too far into things, yes, this farm it will require you to obtain bedrock in your survival worlds. However, that is actually an incredibly easy thing to do on the bedrock edition of Minecraft. You can acquire bedrock at pretty much any time you like. It is a super easy process. And normally, I don't like including bedrock in my tutorials because you're not supposed to be able to get it in survival. However, it is so easy to get and so reliable to get that we may as well use it for one or two fun things where we can. So a few quick details about this farm. This is a fully AFK and fully automatic obsidian farm. Once you turn it on, you can go AFK for as long as you like and you will get millions upon millions of obsidian in your Minecraft world. There's also an on and off switch for you so you can turn it off whenever you like and you will stop getting obsidian. When you're turning it off, you do not have to kill the withers. The wither cage is perfectly stable. The withers will never escape, never die, never take damage, and never cause you any problems. So you basically don't have to worry about them and you will also need two players for this to work one player in the overworld at the end portal and one player in the end dimension to load the actual farm if you don't have a second player for the overworld you can use a ticking area if you need to there's also one minor flaw with this design and that is that sometimes a wither skull can escape the bedrock cage. Overall, it's not too big of a deal and it's rather rare. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rates of this obsidian farm. As you can see, the farm is working perfectly behind me here and we're getting just so, so much obsidian. You will get up to 197,000 obsidian per hour with using this farm. I was so close to breaking 200k, but this is about as optimized as I can get it as of right now. Now. And yeah, it's it's really insane. As you can see, it is just non-stop obsidian all the time, every day, all day. It is fully AFKable, and there's really no complaints about it besides the sheer amount of crazy storage system that you're gonna need for all of that obsidian. I mean, look at that, it's just ah, oh, it's so crazy. <laughs> so for every single minute that you AFK at this farm, you will get basically that amount of obsidian into your inventory which is an utterly insane amount of blocks i have no idea what you're going to need all this obsidian form probably like the biggest gold farm in existence or maybe a giant obsidian biome whatever you want to do this farm can certainly provide it for you for those of you who want it you can actually slow down the rates of this farm to whatever you like you can simply slow down the clock that damages the wither which will make them break blocks slower and you can also slow down the rate at which you send blocks to the end dimension which will make the obsidian platform regenerate slower giving you lesser rates just in case you can't handle 200,000 per hour it's highly suggested that you turn down your game volume while using this farm it's really quite very loud you just play with like one just just one so this farm is the latest in a mini series of end dimension farms that we're making we recently made a gravity block duplicator which also uses this obsidian platform we recently made a bedrock farm and also a wither rose farm this obsidian farm will likely be the last unique farm that we make for the end dimension however i do have ideas and plans for a couple more advanced versions of the farms that we've already made so keep your eyes peeled for those in future weeks let's quickly go ahead and cover all the mechanics that make this obsidian farm possible i swear to you it's actually all really really simple and there's no actual bugs included besides the acquiring of bedrock blocks so this right here is the main part of the farm and this is the 5x5 obsidian platform that you actually spawn in and the end dimension this platform regenerates every single time something goes to the end dimension which we can exploit for an obsidian farm as you can see we have an absolute ton of snowballs coming through to the end dimension which is regenerating this platform as you can see we can break these blocks all we want it is regenerating and it's also deleting all the blocks above it as well so we're using two withers underneath that platform 
completely encased in bedrock to break that obsidian. This concept of using withers and the end spawn platform to farm obsidian is like one of three ways to farm obsidian in Minecraft and it's certainly the most practical way of farming obsidian as well. And here we are in the overworld. This is where you would typically have just your standard end portal for going to the end dimension and above that we've built a pretty beefy snow farm which is going to be sending a ton of snowballs into the end dimension. Now snowballs are basically the best thing to use for resetting that end platform. They are extremely easy to get. You can fully AFK get them and you can infinitely farm them and they basically have no downsides. Technically, you can send anything that you like into the end dimension. You can just like drop through a bunch of items if you want. However, you then have to deal with those items on the other side. The rate at which we're sending through snowballs to the end dimension with this farm is quite a bit more than we need. It's actually regenerating this obsidian platform 10 times per second. And if we were able to break that platform in full 10 times per second, that would actually give you about 900,000 obsidian per hour. So a little bit more than what we're currently farming but that's not a bad thing because the speed at which we're sending through items actually helps us have more water on this platform for some reason the faster you regenerate the platform the more often you have water above it which helps you get items into your storage system right now the withers are not breaking any of the obsidian platform even though it's regenerating and that is because we actually have an off switch for that part of the farm that does not require you to kill the withers so you can completely turn off the farm without killing the withers which is really nice and the only time that the withers will ever break the obsidian as a part of that platform is when they get hit so the only way to hit them and not eventually kill them is by using snowballs so yet again we are using the beautiful snow golems to hit them with a ton of snowballs very very quickly and that will of course cause them to break all the blocks around them which then allows you to farm the obsidian you're probably wondering why we have to use a two withers in the obsidian farm and that is because because of course the spawn platform is a 5x5 five five of obsidian and withers will only ever break a 4x4 four four around them and that is kind of offset from the wither as well. So if you put a wither directly in the middle of the obsidian platform, they're only going to break a 4x4 four four pointing towards the southeast, leaving all of these additional blocks completely unbroken by the wither boss no matter what you do. So if you want to get good coverage of the obsidian platform, you actually need two withers and even then you're missing out on these two corner blocks which isn't really that big of a deal, especially considering that if you want to get full coverage of that 5x5 five five area, you'll actually need four wither bosses, which is going to present quite a few challenges for just spawning them in there in survival mode, so potentially that's a farm that we'll make in the future. Now the withers do have a cooldown on how much damage they can take. I'm not sure exactly what that cooldown is. So what we're doing is we're actually damaging them in tandem. One after the other instead of damaging them both at the same time. And what that allows us to do is break one platform, regenerate it, and then the other wither will break that platform, regenerate a new one, and then it's back to the other wither. So they just kind of flip flop back and forth on breaking the platforms, which is why you'll see the platform breaking in the pattern that it is. That is due to how we're damaging the two withers and that again makes it so that we can help get even better rates. So that is all the mechanics that go into making a successful obsidian farm besides one final thing and that is subscribing. This farm will not work for you if you are not subscribed so make sure you subscribe and maybe hit the bell and do all the other YouTube things that you know what to do at this point. That way you don't miss future tutorials like this in the future and that is by far the worst Shameless promotion I've ever done. Moving on. So let's go ahead and hop into the tutorial, shall we? The first thing that you're going to need to do is build yourself a bedrock block farm. Acquiring bedrock on bedrock edition is extremely easy. There will be a link to that tutorial absolutely everywhere. You need to acquire bedrock first before you even think about building this farm. If you cannot get bedrock in your world, then you cannot build this farm. Secondly, there will be a world download for this farm in the description of the video, along with a full 
full materials list for everything that you need to build the subsidian farm. So now that you were able to farm some bedrock blocks in survival, we're going to go ahead and build up the double wither cage underneath our obsidian platform and get that stuff all installed. So pull out yourself a locator map and you're going to face it towards the south side of your obsidian platform. This right here is south as you can tell because our icon is looking towards the bottom of the map. You want to go ahead and put a little obsidian barrier right here and we'll come back and finish that up later. We then want to go ahead and surround the rest of this platform in some stairs and we'll also waterlog these stairs later as well as these are going to help us push all of our items into our collection system. So now that we have this in place we need to figure out where we're going to put our two withers. Regardless of what you do you're always going to have one wither right there in the center and then you're also going to have one wither to the northwest of that as well. So make sure that you mark out that block right there. Just break out the obsidian and place that with a marker block. You're then going to need to go down underneath this platform and pillar down by four blocks. So one, two, three, four, four for that one as well. And then on the fifth block, you want yourself a piece of bedrock. That is going to be the very bottom part of your wither cage and that's going to be exactly where your wither boss is standing. Now we're going to build up the actual wither cages so surround your two marker blocks and a ring of bedrock on all sides just like so and that is kind of the minimum that you can build. You now need to extend that downwards by two more blocks. Make sure that you leave a one block gap right here that way we can hit the wither's feet with these snowballs to make them break obsidian. And now just surround the rest of these with bedrock and continue that down by two blocks as well. And now what we need to do is go up here on the top of the platform, remove our two marker blocks, and fill in a piece of a bedrock right there at that layer, one block underneath the obsidian platform. What that should do is that should leave you with three blocks inside of the cage so that you have a three block tall area and that is a perfect. You want that to be three blocks tall. So now we're going to go ahead and install these pedestals that we summon the withers on. So grab out your locator map and you want to go to the west side of your platform which is most likely going to be towards your end island. You want to line up with the you know southern most spawning spot right here on the second layer of bedrock and then you want to go four blocks out and this is where you're going to be summoning your wither boss when we eventually put our withers into the cage so that's where your four soul sand will go the next pedestal is going to be kind of offset one block to the northwest so in this location just like so and that's where the soul sand will go when we eventually summon the wither bosses. Now make sure that there is bedrock underneath every single bit of your original obsidian platform. That'll make sure that you don't lose drops into the void. You also want to put bedrock underneath all of the stone stairs and all of the corners that we put up here earlier as well. Now make sure that when you get to the front of this, you do not put a bedrock block right there. We need a water stream right there. So instead you want to have one piece of bedrock down like so and then continue surrounding this platform. And now for the water stream to collect all of your items, you want to go eight blocks out with blue ice from this point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then simply cover the sides of this in obsidian and then this side as well. And then basically just cover the bottom and the other sides of this in obsidian too. Sometimes the skulls from the withers can escape again. So we want to make sure that we protect all of that blue ice. So now you just go ahead and place yourself a piece of water right here in that location and that'll flow all of your obsidian off into your storage system and you can do whatever you like for your storage system. I would suggest that you take this water stream and put it into the main end island and then just bury your storage system into the main end island. That way it never gets blown up by a wither. Now is also a good time to go ahead and waterlog all of your stairs. That way all the water flows into your water stream. Make sure to place extra obsidian right here on this edge. So grab out your locator map once again and we need to go north this time if we're building the snow farm here in the end dimension. We need to go north of seven blocks from this little you know piece of bedrock right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. And then place yourself two pieces of obsidian. Make sure that these are lined up with those two pieces of bedrock. And then we need two dispensers on top of those as well. Of course, those are going to be shooting the snowballs at the withers. So now place three hoppers going into the sides like that and we need to make a 2x8 hopper bed for all of our item collection. So four more hoppers facing downwards directly into those ones and then you want the other three hoppers here in the corners facing into that one and that one like so. 
You now want to go ahead and put an obsidian wall on the front side of this, which is going to be facing your obsidian farm, of course. So this needs to be 10 blocks wide, so it should cover the entirety of your hopper bed. And then it also needs to be five blocks tall as well. So it should go one above your little water platform right there. So fill all of that in, and that'll help protect your snow golems and your snow farm from stray wither skulls. We now need to extend the sides of this wall back by four blocks. So one, two, three, four, and make that three blocks tall on either side as well. This will help protect all of your redstone and your snow golems alike. Go ahead and fill in six solid blocks in between those two walls, put buttons on the fronts of those blocks, turn around and we need buttons on the fronts of those blocks there as well. Now we need to install these six sticky pistons for our snow farm, another six solid blocks in front of those, and then four slabs in each of those locations. To install your snow golems, you want two snow blocks on top of each of your four slabs right here, and then surround those with glass blocks on all four sides, like so, and you want to do that for each one of your pillars of snow. Once those guys are completely surrounded, summon in your golems and just push them into the far wall. And actually this guy right here needs to be in that corner. Block them in with a glass pane. And now we can summon in these two guys as well. Push them against the two far corners. Lock them in with the panes. Build it up. And now we need to do this guy over here as well. Go into that corner. Lock them in and build it up. And now we have all four of our snow golems installed. Now for the redstone for this system, you want to go downwards right here with two pieces of obsidian right there. And then upwards again with some more obsidian in those locations. Now extend this backwards by seven blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You can have a repeater right there. Flick that into a comparator on subtract mode and then again it just go ahead and put your two pieces of redstone dust right there go ahead and point those into these things and then you want to have a repeater right there on one tick now we just need to add a couple more blocks for our pistons so two blocks of obsidian right there go ahead and put redstone dust above each one of your pistons and on those three blocks right there we can now go ahead and turn this thing on and we should see them start producing a bunch of snow and then these things are just going to rapid fire out a ton of snowballs straight into the void it's honestly quite fun looking <laughs> so yeah as you can see this thing is cranking out the snow layers just fine to protect this lower redstone right here from wither skulls go ahead and put another Another layer of obsidian going downwards and then three obsidian to either side go ahead and put four more obsidian in these locations right here surrounding your dispensers and then four pieces of bedrock in front of those and then build this up by a three block tall wall going all the way across this entire thing that is more or less the least amount of bedrock that you can use to protect the bulk of your redstone. Of course, you could fill in this entire thing with bedrock, but that is quite unnecessary. You may need to adjust the layout of your hoppers. That way, all of your dispensers are completely full all of the time. If you ever hear empty clicking from your dispensers, that means that it's running out of snowballs. And you may need to adjust the layout of your hoppers above to supply snowballs to them adequately. So the end side of this farm is now pretty Pretty much completely done you can add a bunch more bedrock to these sides of the farm and to that side of the farm and to that side of the farm if you want and i'll show you that later in the video however it's not necessary what I would recommend doing before you place in any more bedrock is summoning in your two withers. So you need to place in your four soul sand right there and of course it just summon in the wither. That guy should land right there if everything is done exactly as shown in this video. And then we can summon in the next wither on that little pedestal right there as well. And he'll summon in right there on that exact bedrock block if everything is done exactly as shown in the video. So both of those guys are going to break the obsidian platform. If you would like to fill in more bedrock bedrock around your wither cages to prevent skulls from escaping then basically you need to put bedrock in all of these locations it's going to be a giant bedrock box basically and it's going to be a lot of bedrock farming to get all of this however it will prevent a lot of skulls from escaping the wither cages now you need to keep one very very important thing in mind when you're filling in this box do not fill in the west wall where you have your summoning pedestals if you fill in this wall you will not be able to summon withers inside of your cage they will summon on top of your actual like obsidian platform 
You do not want that. Do not fill in any more bedrock on this west wall. This all needs to be left as is. Okay, the in dimension side of this farm is now completely done. Let's head over to the overworld and build the snow farm over there. Now, this thing that I've designed is way overpowered and certainly way more than you need for this particular obsidian farm. However, I spent like three hours designing this and making sure it was perfect. So I'm gonna show you how to build it. <laughs> you probably only need like half of this, but you can build the whole thing if you want. Anyway, the first thing that you need to do is, of course, to find yourself an end portal in your Minecraft world. These things are all over the place, so just go ahead and find one. It's not that big of a deal. Go ahead and cover up the top of it, because you don't want to fall into the end dimension as you're building this. And then you want to go up three blocks from that little covering, so four total blocks upwards. Now you need to get yourself three dispensers facing directly downwards, like so, and then get yourself three observers powering those dispensers, so three observers facing directly upwards right there. Put solid blocks underneath all of those observers, and that is gonna be the very starting point of our snowball farm. This snowball farm is mirrored, so each side is identical to the other side, as you can see from this right here. So I'll show you how to build the right side, and then if you want to, you can also build that on the left side as well. The first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get ourselves three hoppers, one pointing into each of those dispensers, one hopper facing it downwards right there in the center, and two hoppers going into it from either side. You want another hopper going into it from right there, and then two more hoppers going into that one from either side as well. So this side of the machine right here is actually going to be the back side, and that's where the on and off switch for your snowball machine is going to be, just so you are aware. You want to go ahead and place the three saw blocks to the sides of these observers on both sides like so and then go ahead and place a two block tall wall going all the way around this little pad of hoppers that we just installed just like so we now need to get four sticky pistons in place one in that direction right there to move that block and then we need two on this side one right there and the other one right there to push those two blocks and the final one needs to be placed right there and that's going to move that block place in three slabs in those locations and now we're going to flip back around to the outside of the farm and place in a couple more solid blocks to the back side of that slab. This is all in reinforcement just to keep the items from glitching out of your containment area. We're also going to have two snow golems, one on top of either of these slabs. So we're just going to go ahead and install the glass for that right now as well. So just place in four glass blocks and those locations. Now it's time to connect up all the pistons. You want a line of solid blocks going in between those two, block in between those, and then connect these up with blocks as well. Go ahead and put a block above that piston, redstone dust all along those, blocks above those pistons. You want a repeater on one tick right there, and then go ahead and put redstone dust down right there as well. Now's a good time to install three blocks right there, two more right there, two more on that side, and finally two more right there as well. You might have a bunch of items glitch out of your machine, so you want blocks behind and underneath all these pistons, including one block down from there as well. It's kind of a lot of blocks, but in the long run, it'll save you a lot of loss in snowballs. And also make sure to place three blocks right there on that side as well. And then you need to do the same thing for this piston right there. And now it's time for the central redstone. So you want an extra block up right there, two more blocks there and one more right there. Get yourself a repeater on one tick going into that block of redstone dust on top of it. And then one repeater on top of each and every single one of those observers and two slabs to prevent snowballs from landing up there. To prevent snowballs from landing on top of the repeaters, you also want to have three trap doors right there as well. Now for the main clock of the farm, you need to go back five blocks from that repeater, so that is five blocks right there. Get yourself a lever and flick that, that is going to be the on and off switch for your farm. You need a comparator in subtract mode, and then three blocks like so. Place in two pieces of redstone dust, and you should see those clock, and now place in two more blocks right there. Put a repeater on three ticks going into that piston and then three more pieces of redstone dust and you'll see that this entire system is now in action. Installing these snow golems into your farm is very easy. You simply need to put two pieces of snow and then a pumpkin on top, push them into the corner and then put a glass pane to lock them into that corner. 
do that on the other side as well and this farm will now be producing a ton of snow as soon as you turn it on also make sure to place in a button right there and right there as well that'll help make sure those snow layers break and turn into snowballs so that is half of the overworld snow farm completely done if you want to build the other half then literally just build the same thing on the other side it is exactly identical and now our overworld snowball farm is officially complete we can go ahead and turn this thing on and that'll start sending a ton of snowballs to the end dimension and they'll all be staggered to give you the most regenerations possible now you need to make sure that either a ticking area or a player is loading this farm and we can now go to the end dimension as well as you can see the obsidian platform is now regenerating all the water is flickering and we can see all the snowballs are hitting the platform very very quickly the final thing that we need to do is turn on this snowball machine that's going to be producing a ton of snowballs firing them all at the withers and the withers will be breaking the obsidian platform as you can see we are getting tons and tons and tons of obsidian delivered straight to our afk spot or our storage system so that is a completely done official amazing 197,000 drops per hour obsidian farm if you have any questions comments or concerns about this obsidian farm then of course let me know if a comment down below i read all the comments on the entire channel so let me know your thoughts about this farm and otherwise if you did enjoy this tutorial please leave a like on the video it helps out the video and the channel significantly i do hope that you enjoyed this because this took me a very very long time to design and of course if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future then make sure to subscribe Otherwise, thank you again ever so much for watching. I will see you guys down in the comment section and in the next video. And then there was silence.